Hey guys, I've been trialling some revolutionary new swim tech and now you can get your hands on it too. This is EO Swim Better, a swimming evolution in the palm of your hands. Improve your technique with EO Swim Better. Analyze your stroke technique with EO's Swim Better handset. Go to eolab.com, use code BRETT at checkout and save 10%. Tired of settling for less than the best with your team's dry land program? SwimStrong Dryland is the answer you've been looking for. With world-class dry land programming for every age group, customized to fit your team's needs, nutritional coaching and education centered on the latest evidence-based research, leadership training and character development to promote an athlete-driven culture, sports psychology education and mental skills training, coaches' corners to promote collaboration, data-driven performance analysis, and an unrivaled family of athletes, coaches, and teams, Fast swimming starts here. Former swimmers looking for a way to give back to the sport in New York City, reach out to Imagine Swimming. Since 2002, they've been the premier learn to swim school with international and American staff, including Olympic champions, Anthony Irvin and Eric Vent. Imagine Swimming offers infant to adult classes, plus competitive team options, water polo, and an artistic swimming club coached by an Olympic silver medalist. With flagship locations across Manhattan and Brooklyn, Imagine is always looking for the next generation of swimmers to pass on their knowledge and passion for swimming. We individualize training in the pool, so why not individualize your nutrition? Erica Barney of Barney Wellness Building will help you and your swimmers get exactly what each athlete needs through genetic testing and personalized nutrition plans. So stop guessing what you should and shouldn't be putting into your body. Athletes within a few weeks have noticed they're recovering faster because they're fueling their body with what they need and staying away from what their body hates. Erica understands swimming. She gets it. She's worked with over 20 Olympians, including the fastest man in the world, Caleb Dressel. Group discounts are available, so go to Biney Wellness Building and get in touch with Erica today. That's Biney, B-E-I-N-E, wellnessbuilding.net. Vasa has been the go-to training tool outside of the pool for over 30 years. Vasa's products are ideal for developing power and proper technique in your swimmer's catch. Add a few Vasa trainers to your pool deck and it's like adding an extra lane to your swimming pool. Go to vasatrainer.com, use code BREAD at checkout and get 10% off anything from Vasa. Okay, so the question I've been dying to ask you is what is the case against aerobic base well my answer and anybody i talk to is that i'm not avoiding the aerobic base i just i developed the aerobic, the aerobic base in a completely different manner you know I'll, we'll, we'll go to the chalkboard okay. we'll talk about it yeah tell me this so, what, what does this mean well if if i'm if i'm going to develop aerobic base and you've got a hundred muscle fibers. I want all hundred increasing aerobic capacity. And some co some scientists or coach scientists are going to tell you that the fast twitch fibers don't have aerobic capacity and that's just wrong you know their profiles is different but most swimming athletes aren't 100 percent fast twitch you know they're, they're you're not most swimmers if you take a muscle biopsy they're a mix of both but you you don't these fast twitch have aerobic capacity in order to get fast twitch to maximize the aerobic capacity profile You've got to uh, you've got to recruit the muscle fiber. All right. So when you do, um, if you look at recruitment over uh, intensity, all right. You're if you're low on the intensity, max on the intensity on that end. And you're recruiting fibers you're recruiting fibers like that and then it goes the intensity goes up in here well what that means is down on this level you are if you've got 100 muscle fibers you got 10 firing 
And then you got mm. the next 10 firing. Then you got the next 10 firing. Mm. And so to engage 100 muscle fibers, you've got to go a lot. Mm. But if you're going maximum effort, you're getting 100 muscle fibers being recruited. Mm. And it doesn't matter what their profile is, fast switch, slow switch, you want to recruit these muscle fibers to get this change in aerobic capacity. All right, so if you were to look at my workouts on a heart rate spectrum, my workouts look, well, after warm up, they don't do much on warm up, they're a bunch of pansies. All right, but work, work, it looks like this. Yeah. And this being max, it should look more like that. Whereas in a traditional model, it looks more like. more like that in mm. terms of the efforts taken it's always sub max it's not not mm. there so I'm trying to recruit 100% when you recruit 100% all these muscle fibers um, through race pace training I don't even call it sprint training but mm. through race pace training race pace training so you call it short sprint long sprint don't yeah. you? yeah yes I do so race pace training is is equal to maximum recruitment of fibers all right there's a good study i told you this the other day long time ago ronald terry young and he looked at sprint training you can find this online oh yeah sure and it was probably 73, I don't know, a like, long time ago. Uh, but he saw that the aerobic capacity would, would increase with sprint training, with sprint training, aerobic capacity. Uh -huh. So but he, and he, he looked at the whole profile that measures aerobic capacity, cytochrome C and other. other and he was other studying other what kind of athletes? Uh, there were some animals. Oh, animals. No. You can control the animals better than you can control the athletes. <laughs> so, so that's kind of the basis is we're trying to maximally recruit all the fibers in race pace training, and uh, you've got you got it's not just physiologic. It's 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 the physiology, all right? It's it's the metabolic system. You, you were talking to me about the, the continuum too, right? Yeah, I'll, I'll talk to that. And it's the neural system. We all forget the neural system. The neural system is related to uh, tempo, holding tempo. You, you got to teach the neural system to fire. And you got to teach the neural system fire, and then it recruits muscle fiber, and then you maximize your muscle recruitment with perfect form. Then you've got neural adaptation, you've got physiologic and metabolic adaptation. And the biggest mistake, and I made it too when I was a young kid, a young coach, is we talked about the, the aerobic system and the anaerobic system and as if they were separate entities. Mm. But, and this is all related to glucose metabolism. which generates energy for muscle contraction. And the way glucose breaks down, it goes, if you look at this, it goes, well, it doesn't go that way, it goes the other way. It goes, uh, glucose breakdown to form ATP happens in uh, an anaerobic then an aerobic pathways all right you can't get this without getting this you have to break down the glucose and anaerobic just simply means that oxygen is not required it's not that it's not there it's, requ it's not required. O2 not required, not needed. Here for moral ATP generation, oxygen is required. But you can't get to here 
without doing this first. So coaches think they're separate entities when they're linked. They're linked. You have to go anaerobic, got to go to aerobic. So when you're maximizing your effort up here in, in recruitment, effort, intensity, you're getting this whole machinery going at max effort. Now when this aerobic can't keep up with it, it's not the lactate that everybody thinks, oh, it's lactic acid, oh my God, it's awful. Mm. All right, all right, that is not the problem. The problem is the pH change that happens when you form lactic acid. Lactic acid becomes a storage substrate for aerobic glycolysis. So it goes to lactic acid, but can very rarely go back in here when the effort is required to be less. So I don't have a problem with lactic acid buildup because the body's going to say, we need to increase lactic acid clearance. We're seeing a pH change. We got to modify the physiology in order to handle the pH change. All right, so we got uh, bicarbonate, the bicarbonate system. is enhanced when it sees a big pH change and it comes in to change that, uh, to, to accommodate the, the pH change. When pH becomes more acidic, all these mechanisms shut down. So the body needs like how to that, learn. Like that, the alarm's going off, that's the body shutting down. Yeah, that's the body <laughs> shutting down. So you, you've got to expose the body to pH. Mm. You've got to expose the body to pH change so the bicarbonate system is enhanced and that's going to reduce the pH change so these, these reactions are chemical reactions and you want them to be able to flow back and forth when you get a, we get a pH shift more acidic then everything kind of shuts down and, and you have to suppress the activity so you, you want this you this is going to recruit all the fibers they're going to have an increase in metabolic profile or aerobic profile and you've got to understand that it has to, it has to go this. These aren't separate entities. They're, they're all they're all linked together. That I think is the mistake I made when I was a young coach, thinking things were aerobic and things were anaerobic, mm. instead of realizing they're all they're all one, they're all together. They're all linked together. And the reason to focus more on the anaerobic is because of this. But it's not anaerobic. It's just max effort. Yeah. So it's not anaerobic in and of itself. It, when it's when you have an increase in lactate appearance you have it's not just that your the increased intensity is creating more lactate it it the clearance rate is compromised somehow it's not trained right whatever so it's the clearance rate you've got you've got we're we're walking around we're we're producing lactate mm. but when you've got lactate production and the, the clearance of lactate are equal. Oops. So you get production equals lactate clearance. If you were to take a blood sample on us now, it would be very low. But as soon as we get motoring, that lactate will increase, but it's related more to the clearance. So how do you get the clearance rate to change? Well, it's gotta be exposed to lactate. And lactate, which is important to realize, lactate might be the sub, the, the, the preferred substrate for gluconeogenesis in the liver. The brain likes lactate. You can have two muscle cells right next to each other. One is a net producer. And right next door, this one can be, uh, uh, this one can take that lactate and turn it back into glucose or it can go into the Krebs cycle and, and uh, turn into energy. Mm. So you can have two cells right next to each other that one produces, the other one consumes. So that's my mad scientist. So be honest, how long ago did he lose you? He lost me at muscle fiber. <laughs>